Hi, I'm Mark. Uh, obviously, I run uh, I run Coach Logic. Um, I'm not going to sell you Coach Logic today, don't worry. Um, but uh, I'm also the head coach at uh, Curry Chieftains, which is a Premiership club in, in Scotland. It's not Leicester Tigers Premiership <laughs> level. It's uh, it's probably we give like a national one team a good game. Probably standards wise. Um, but it's the level before uh, Glasgow and Edinburgh. Um, so we produce a lot of players for that level. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, I obviously will mention how we use analysis as well dip into the Coach Logic platform. Um, and a bit about my background as well. Um, so I also want to look at video as a key learning asset. And, and Tom touched on that a little bit. Um, but I really want to discuss how it can be used as a coaching tool. Um, this is me and Andy. Like I said, my, my background, uh, both of our backgrounds were in, were, were in teaching, uh, teaching and learning before we created the platform. Um, Andy was a sports coaching lecturer, um, and I was a PE teacher uh, at George Watson's College, which is a defence school in Scotland. Um, and we kind of were playing together on the same team as well, and our experience of analysis was traditional, you know, but without the technology. So it was kind of a uh, Having a DVD, fiddle around with buttons, missing stuff, keeping us all in the room, maybe one of us get, or two of us getting any kind of real value from this the thing, and then having to go out onto a cold training night at Millenny Park in Curry. Uh, it's very cold there. It's got its own, uh, it's got its own climate. You're quite excited about training when you turn up there and some many clouds to let it know where the wind builds up. So, warm environment, enjoying, not really focusing on analysis, and then going out to try and perform in, in, the, in the cold wet millennia was just a, not a really good way to prime us for learning, I would say. Um, so that was kind of a frustration. Not the coach's fault, by the way, because I'm coaching him next year, so I uh, can't, can't miss him too much. Um, another part was, as a teacher, um, I had little resource. Um, so I was teaching, I wasn't just like a rugby coach, I was teaching as well as doing rugby coaching. Um, and. I didn't, and I had a young family, so me doing two hours worth of analysis on a Sunday was just, just wrong. Um, and also, we were the only department in the in, in the school that would kind of pretty much outsource the, the kids' homework. Um, I felt the players should be doing the, the work of analysis because I felt that was like a key learning area um, and of the match. So we were supportive in that, but I wanted them to, to take more control of the whole process. So that's why I created the platform. Um, so. What's the value of video? I want you to kind of um, think for a second, um, pair up with someone, and then uh, I want you just to share back to the room. So you sit beside someone, value of video, um, just for 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and then get your thoughts together after you have think about it. All right, <laughs> think, pair, share, off you go. So, yeah, just, just, just thoughts from you guys. Um, yeah. Allows for accurate reflection. Obviously, yeah. not the kind of accuracy of coach and a player being able to uh, feedback and kind of draw from the game from being live in a moment of emotion and having a narrow point of view is you know, obviously no idea compared to having good video to reflect upon. Yeah, what do you think do you take from a game normally? What do, I, what do you think normally sticks in your head from matches? Stays. Stays, yeah. Big moments, normally negatives. Yeah, big moments from matches. Something like 10% if you have to focus on the score, isn't it? Yeah. Outcomes rather than processes. Pardon? Outcomes rather than processes. Yeah, for sure. So it's like these big moments. You know, I used to have a counter, and I'm an analyst, and so I used to just have a button counter. I used to just count like missed tackles, um, just stuff like that. And then instead of me at half time giving players a real hard time about crap defence because we leaked a couple of tries from two missed tackles, I could probably more accurately understand we missed two missed tackles. Have two missed tackles in the whole game is not. It's not like a crisis point. So, yeah, those big moments definitely um, sway you as a, as a coach. So that's, yeah, good, good point. Sure. There's still accountability as well. Yeah. Can you talk about evidence-based feedback or um, research that's going to start from what video is going to source of evidence? Yeah, so what kind of so research are you talking about? You can start to formulate opinions, feedback, um, and all this feedback on to that evidence with the point change. Yeah. It is what it is. So it makes it more objective. Yeah. 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 Any stuff around here? You can look at opposition, plan for opposition, and figure out contrasts and tactics. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, I'd say I definitely the preview stuff is becoming more, more and more a thing because there's more access to the video footage, so you're actually getting opposition stuff and uh, able to prepare for their opposition stuff as well. Yes, that's a really good point. Um, anything else for me? Just some like stuff that we, we look at is um, that self awareness. Um, so it's it's not just about the accuracy of like reflecting on a team performance. Um, because you might be swayed by big moments, but um, actually just the self-awareness of the player. Um, so, if I could ask for one key skill in all the players that I work with, it's, it's, it's self-awareness. Because if you have that self-awareness, then that can lead to understanding what you're really good at, you know, um, rather than kind of standing back and not hold for it when you've got a good opportunity, which I get really frustrated with, especially when boys are really fast. Um, and the other bit is, is, is maybe sometimes um, not knowing what they're, they need to work on as well. So that self-awareness just for me sets, sets the, the, whole, the whole scene for me as a coach. I can really work with the kids as good self-awareness. Um, priming them for learning, so the motivational stuff. Tom, Tom mentioned, mentioned <coughs> got some stuff in here actually about priming people for learning. It could be motivational videos, it could be kind of stuff that you're going to work on in training, but just priming them before they take the training field. Um, problem solving, so get the players to kind of check the match out, um, feedback to you, get them in the habit of problem solving um, and improving their communication skills. So a big part for us this year was that we had plenty of kids that, plenty of players, from kids but young people, plenty of players that can um, problem solve, um, but their communication was horrendous. Like, they're essentially that old school coach who goes, that was awful, like bang, straight in your face, bottom on the back foot, defensive arguments because they've never been taught how to coach and be effective. So a big, big, big reflection for me this year is that if I'm going to give them the power to go and problem solve and discuss, I also need to give them the tools to do that properly as a coach. So we talk about creating coaches out of the player group. Um, we generally make that about them understanding the game really well, but actually we've got to make sure that they're really good coaches as well um, from this point of view of, of communication. So those, those are the things that we look at. Um, the perceptions of analysis is that it takes a lot of time. Um, it's generally looking at like the work on, like so it's quite negative in terms of approach, and it ends up with like this, <laughs> um, where um, we have got one person, um, a coach or an analyst or someone leading um, a session. So it's very much coach heavy or analyst heavy, and then the players are the ones that receive information last, um, and. And, and they've not been involved in the process. So, again, for me, there's a bit of an imbalance to the way it's, it's done. So, I only learned this when I was a coach because I started to get more access to footage. And I thought, ah, oh, if only I knew now, and then what I know now as a coach, I'd, I'd be a much better player. I play for Scotland and stuff. Um, I tell them that all the time. Um, no, I mean, no. Um, so, that's because it's access to footage. So if you imagine this room here, you've never seen the game. I have already twice or three times because I watched it when you guys were playing. And so you think so, so I've kept this from you. It's on my computer. And then I've got a, a reel of stuff that um, of clips that I consider really important to the match and that I've already made my mind up on. And I chuck a question at you. You've never seen it before. You know, two or three seconds to make up your mind, and then you've got to speak your opinion in front of a room full of your peers. Well, I've had to kind of privacy in my own room and just like check it out, going back, check. You know, that's a really imbalanced way to do any kind of analysis. So the reflection of the coach is these guys have no idea like about the game. They're not engaging and frustrated. And the reflection of the players is this guy's a dick. He just keeps like shouting at me, and making me feel like making me feel crap in front of my peers. So that's 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 kind of the that's the perception of analysis. I'm really big into um, I'm really big I like um, I like new, new, um, neuroscience instead of where I like it. Um, and, and the, what I take from that main thing for me is that um, we've got this kind of new brain so the neocortex. It's so where you want your players to be. It's like the best place for them to be because it's creative, it's got decision making in there. It's got like thinking out of the box, problem solving, it's, it's, it's huge. And that's what makes us human, not that, right? Then you've got this old brain, which is like our natural instinct uh, when we fear danger, so it's fight, flight, or freeze. And by 
And although we're not like chucking a line at them anymore, like we still go through that whole brain as soon as we fear some kind of danger. And in an analysis setting, that could be that calling someone out in front of a large crowd. Um, and that takes them to their, their old brain. So for me as a coach, I've really got to work in my communication to make sure I keep the players in that new brain because it's really difficult to get them out of the old brain um, and then go out and train the pitch with that creativity that I wanted to show. So really important we start to look at analysis differently. Um, so the whole point of, I guess, the coach logic point and the point that I'm trying to do with my players is split the time and the effort so everyone's kind of getting access to the footage early and feeding in. Uh, making it really positive um, and then having discussions. So not coming to them with answers, but coming to them with sort of more questions, <coughs> leading them. I'm not saying ask an open question all the time, but we'd be here forever, but leading them a little bit. And I'm not saying completely give away control, because again, it's just a more subtle way of sometimes having control, right? I'm not, I'm not one of those coaches that are saying, players go and do your own thing and, and they'll see you in the clubhouse. Um, I do want to have an element of control of my players, but more of a directional control, uh, facilitating them towards that direction that I want to travel. Um, so, I'll ask you a question, um, again, just to the guy beside you. What would happen if all you focused on in analysis was all the cool stuff in the game? What would happen? So, just have a discussion with the guy beside you. What would happen if all you focused on in a single game was all the cool stuff and that's all you ever presented back to the pitch? What would happen? The cool, the cool stuff. All the cool stuff. No negative stuff, only positive stuff. What would happen if you did that? Yeah. Do you want to go first? No. I think, I think we just talked about. Depends how you frame positive. Yes, so if it's lots of the behaviours that you want to happen, and, and as Tom mentioned, for yourself, processes rather than positive outcomes. If people get really good examples consistently, we'll probably start to model some of those but I can pick up. Obviously, I think we can see the answer that there's a balance and you should show some stuff to work on. But if you had to pick one and all you showed was positive and you framed it correctly, I think you'd probably get some good uptake for people. Yeah. You know, you're modelling success, aren't you? Essentially, yeah. if you go back to the level two world, showing what success looks like, you yeah, it's cool. Showing what's achieved. Agree with that. Think anyone else got other stuff? Uh, oh. What's the danger? What's well, the danger? You don't know, challenge or, or develop or work on. Yeah. You know, everything you need to improve. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like how they came up. I think everything they did right, potentially. If it goes too far, too far that way. Mm -hmm. Maybe making a less resilient player. If you thought again it's positive and then all of a sudden they step up for media players for the first team, they might actually have a coach who gives them negative feedback. How do they actually, are they resilient to it? Or? Yeah. yeah. It's a very common point, literally. As um, Mitch mentioned earlier about priming and yeah. engaging. You put the cool bits and you make things cool, you'll get high engagement. Yeah, yeah. But then you've got to have that balance that these guys touch on in terms of increasing the learning. But, you know, not a bad thing. Yeah, I used the word cool deliberately. Um, it's just, no, but it was, it was trying to take you on a track of thinking um, it would just be like, I don't know, risky stuff. Um, and and, and that's, but you actually came straight in and said, if we're, if we're looking at positive behaviours, then that's a really good way to, to, to get uh, behaviour changes on the pitch. So, like, having a framework is really important. Um, but then showing positive examples of that framework on behaviours you want them to. Um, achieving a pitch is a really good way for other people to start modelling that behaviour. Like it's, 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 it's really cool. And that's what you do out in the open. That's what, this is what I want to do out in the open. And I don't do it enough, right? Um, I want to frame that kind of positive stuff as much as possible here. When it becomes a, a thing, of, when it becomes more of a negative behaviour, especially if it's individual, I must do that one to one. Um, I must do that um, so we can have a discussion. So if I do that in a room full of other people, it's just going to make that kid kind of do that old brain stuff. So I'm not saying it's, it's a no to that. I definitely think we need to build resilience in players. I think the best way to build resilience is to make them not fear it um, and to make them understand how valuable it is to get feedback um, because that's like a way to improve. And it's really the way you deliver that feedback is important. But to a full room, I'd, I'd be very much on the positive stuff. But it'd be very much tailored to what I want to see in terms of behaviours. Not always just like cool. if I had um, freedom to play as one of my one of my examples, then I would probably pick up some cool stuff. And um, even if the 
outcome of it didn't always work out. That intent to play would be something that I would focus on. Um, so yeah, I would, I would be sure to post it as well. Or cool effort. <laughs> um, yeah. um, there's encouraging signs, we were at uh, Rosen Park Simmons, um, and the good thing about Rosen Park was that these guys only had about you know five, ten minutes to come in and check out their stuff, and they were just um, looking at their, their cool stuff, their highlights, um, their best bits, and so much engagement around video. It was really, really good to see. Um, we want to create informal environments um, where people can feel free to kind of have discussion. Um, so the setting that you do the analysis in is, is really important as well. But really encouraging signs. Um, so my team, um, I'm not in that video because I only became head coach this year. Last year I was assistant coach. I was far too busy with coach logic. So the team photo wasn't top of my list, so I didn't turn up. Um, and so my brother, Ben Cairns, I didn't mention him on a recent podcast. He got really pissed off at me. So I must mention that he's done a lot of good work to, to give us the success we've had. Um, right, so that's that. Um, we've got we've managed to 15 Edinburgh casual players, um, you know, lots of Scotland under 20s, and, uh, and we, we, but we've still been we've still been like consistently performing well. So it's not like you can go development or you can go winning games. Like, you can definitely achieve both. Um, and also a thing about our club is we don't have a massive amount of resource. Um, for example, even though we produced. Um, lots of good players and made, made the league playoffs the last five years in a row. We didn't make this new league called the Super Six because we don't have the stadium and the money and all that kind of stuff. So uh, just to give you a sense of that. So our approach to players is we're going to make you the best player you can be and that's the way we can kind of um, grab players from a very crowded marketplace within in Edinburgh and we're on the outskirts as well. So, so this is a Chieftain's kind of model. Um, Hard to see, but <coughs> this is kind of how we focus our analysis. We've got attack, defence, contact, line out, and scrum. I've actually changed contact to continuity recently after meeting Brian Ashton. Um, we were talking about stuff. The good thing about this coach logic thing that I'm involved in is I get to meet some really cool people. Um, he was one, one of the guys that I've always thought I want to meet him, so I did. Um, he, he said you should change the contact to continuity because um, we discussed what contact would tell a player, and that's like must have contact. But if you say continuity and call them a ball player rather than a ball carrier, it starts making them think about well the quickest way to produce ball in this situation is to maybe pass before or maybe just to pass after, maybe just pass on the ground first and then I'm going to go through I had this thing called the three P's, which I still have, which is protect, position, present, the way you kind of recycle ball on the ground. Um, but I'd already kind of told them that's what you should do, taking contact. Anyway, it's a different stuff. So wording is really important, but that's how we set it up. Um, the guys in the top boxes, they are the leaders of the analysis. So we will send out the game to them. They will just clip up the match for reflection based on those key areas. If they can't do it, they've, they've got um, subordinates, I guess. <laughs> guys that can kind of say, hey, listen, I'll win this weekend. And they coach the players. Oh, they're players. Okay. Yeah, so everyone's players. Yeah, sorry. The whole sheet there is players. Sorry. Um, yeah, definitely should say that. Um, and so... If they can't do it that week, then they'll just allocate someone down the list um, as well. So every week we'll have those five areas tagged um, by by the team. Um, and then in terms of our processes, this is kind of how it looks. So we've got um, obviously match gets uploaded as soon as soon as it's um, complete. Um, Sunday's all about clipping and starting to create discussions within the coach logic environments. It's an online environment for them. Have to be together, and then Monday's the same kind of stuff. <clears throat> Coaches review all the kind of talking points. I do create clips, I don't just say, like, go and do it all yourself. I do when I create clips myself as well. But a lot of the time, I'm just involved in the players' discussions, trying to prod them, poke them, and come to a decision. Again, decisions are really important, like, you shouldn't just leave it up as a ah, they're all very valid reasons to do everything that you've just said. Let's go and try everything because. Best way to do something is everyone doing the same thing, generally. Um, so it's not about to pull them all together. Uh, Wednesday, like our after the session, the review at training is normally a few clips. <coughs> they are led, they've been primed, and they can kind of go through that with the rest of the team. Um, Wednesday is opposition stuff. Thursday, players presenting opposition stuff, and then that's it. So that's how we do our week. Um, 
to make sure we can kind of maximize a full team rather than just. Um, like I, I looked around my changing room when I went to senior rugby and said, these guys have got like, some of them had jobs that they could sign off on a, like a, a million pound deal somewhere. And I was saying, nah, don't touch the game. <laughs> like, because you just don't, you, you won't understand it as much as me. I need to give these guys responsibility. They're, they're, they're pretty senior people. And, and, in, and in schools, if you think about um, your school musical or thing at the end of the year, where you've got guys doing the lighting, guys doing the sound, guys doing um, the, the performing, the stage management, the whole thing, the whole thing comes together, it's all run by the kids because you've only got two drama teachers or something. Like, you have an opportunity to do that every single week at your school. But this would be like our clipping. Just, just so you know, we do get analysis chucked in by the SRU, and we do use that analysis as well to find points quickly. That's done on that so there is a point to doing all that stuff as well. Um, uh, but this, this is what we focus on, like key areas. This is growing arms and legs, this panel. Um, we need to kind of produce it again for the start of next season. Um, but say, for example, their line out, click on that. Um, and then it'll come up with the line outs. And you can see in the top corner, it's really difficult to see, probably. It's Vince Wright, so he's a player. And he's mentioned the forwards group. And then they're going to start a discussion on that. That stuff within the lineup. Um, same for if I look at um, all the where have we got continuity attack. That's me. So I'm all continuity. That's my kind of area. Um, but a bit later on with this one here, and that'll be Scotty who's doing some stuff as well. So kind of all contributing and creating clips and sending them out to the the group. So that'll be a Saturday. That'll be a Sunday, and Monday. Have been known to do it on a Saturday. Boys receiving it on the queue into the nightclub, which is just a bad move. Just for that. don't want to get the replies on a Saturday night to your question. Um, so, and then all that stuff goes out onto the feed, you know, and people just talk about it. So all those little clips now sent out. Jamie, Fogo, chuck his stuff out. This is a coach, Ben. Um, ben Robbins, kick kickoffs. So it's just a feed and then discussion around those, those kind of key areas. And that's all it is. And then as a coach, I just kind of go, right, I want to I want to look at that one, so I'll start it. And I'll start a bunch of stuff, and then that'll become a kind of preview. That's, that's, our, that's our, our process. Um, right, um, back in the slide. It doesn't always work. <laughs> this is a guy um, who just got signed up by Glasgow last week, during the week. Started for Glasgow against Edinburgh. It's a big game. It's definitely a derby. There's, there's no other teams in this game. Um, and uh, he got man of the match, played eight minutes. So, Marie Thomas, top of Conference A, congratulations. Some of your emotions right now after that victory. Um, I'm pretty happy. Like I came into this game, it's probably the biggest game of my life. It's my fourth professional game or something, and I'm happy to get 80 minutes. I thought my match fitness was going to be shot because I've only played like two games like the last two months. But so I'm pretty happy. So. Yeah. Just your second start for Warriors. You looked very at home out there. How much did you enjoy the opportunity at this level? Oh, I loved it. Playing here at Scotland in front of all these fans, well, it was great. And to be in it as well. Your teammates are enjoying a bit of water on you, if you're wondering what that is. But you didn't look intimidated at all against your opposite number, Hamish Watson. Uh, um, I just went into this game, just, just I thought, let's front up, you know? like. But uh, I just thought, yeah, front up. That's all I could think of. Four tries of the highest order. Which for you was the pick of the day? The last one with Tommy, uh, George making that break, and then the support, and then just finishing. It was just, yeah, that was great. Unreal. You got to Edinburgh, though, right from the off, though. How important was it to, to attack that game plan right from the start of this match? Oh, uh, oh, no, I don't know. I don't even know. Uh, I'm not very good at these tactics questions, but yeah, so. What about you're now up against the winner of Ulster against Connets? I mean, how do you feel going into to a fixture of that magnitude? Oh, no, I have no idea what's going on after this, to be honest. Um, I'm just happy about the win here. So, Tom, you are the Guinness Pro 14 man of the match. Pro's coach, and then he just absolutely pushes under the bus. Like, I've worked really hard on his tactical knowledge of the game. Um, mm. He's been in the club for four years, he's been knocking on the door. He's got these little back rows in Scotland, so he's been really difficult. It's always an opportunity to man of the match. Interview thinking, oh, here we go. Maybe he'll mention, maybe he'll mention the club, maybe he'll mention like the stuff we worked on. And then as soon as he gets asked a tactical question, ah, I don't do this tactical stuff. He does. He's, <laughs> he's actually a big contributor, I promise. Um, but 
Thanks, Tommy. Um, right, so just ways to consider analysis. This is like a, a, an analysis session you could do where you've got, um, it takes less than 10 minutes to do a full match analysis. So instead of thinking it as we do at Curry about you take Scrum, you take line out, and all that stuff, you just go, you take the first five minutes, you take the second five minutes, the third. and you just dish out the five minutes of a match to every person in the, in the classroom or in their own time. You could extend that to 10, 15 minutes and have groups of uh, two or three looking at it, discussing stuff. And then at the end of it, they just press save, all their clips are there, and your match analysis is completed collaboratively, less than 10 minutes. Yeah. And then it allows you to flip it and go, right, we're going to use our, the majority of our time to get you guys up front and discuss why you clipped those things. Like, what was the reason behind that? Why did you make those decisions? Let's discuss it. Rather than the discussion being this tiniest part and the analysis and presentation being the biggest part. Um, and then the match highlights. So I always just create a little um, filter called highlights and anything they see that's cool, <laughs> they would chuck in there and then we can rip it off as a movie and that just becomes a highlight for them as well at the end of it. So that's total time, 25 <coughs> minutes, doing it at lunchtime on Monday, um, just something. The game plan, so another use of video is, is, is uh, we use it for game plans. So, for example, we film a lot of session and stuff. Like it's, this is in pre-season. This is August. We got all made sure we went through all our lineups at that given point, so that a player could come on, check out. Depending on the position they're playing within their lineup, we could check out all those uh, movements. So, just jump back in the natural platform. This is it here. If I am um, the number um, two jumper, just click on that, and it's going to come up with all the number two jumper stuff um, and all the movements. Uh, for that, that position. So again, we, we have a lot of pros coming down from Glasgow. Um, that's who we're aligned to. I told you we're on the outskirts right now. Um, and, and they need to know really quickly about kind of what our movements are. So instead of us giving them a game plan, they have to then imagine the picture, just give them the picture, and then the game plan on the side. So if you just click this. So um, I just, yeah, if I see a movement, I just go start red button, stop it, and then put it under what jumper it is, and that's it done. And then it just adds another clip to that. that list. Um, so that's analysis stuff. Point systems. Tom's doing this at Leicester with uh, Tom Harrison. You'll be doing it a little bit as well. Um, since you're done. Um, so it's uh, challenging the players around um, gathering points based on specific behaviours. So every player at the Leicester Academy gets their own copy of a match. Within that copy, they do their own personal analysis, and they're provided with their own um, kind of areas for improvement, um, position dependent, I guess, or maybe individually dependent, depending on what they want to improve on. And then they just get an allocated set of points every time they achieve that in a game. So again, they're looking for that positive stuff. And when do I do that behaviour, rather than when do I not do that behaviour? And then they're trying to gather up more points on a weekly basis. Stuff on the left hand side is um, what Fletch gave me, um, John Fletcher, um, that he used to use at England um, for an attack and the defence stuff. So he would allocate a certain number of points to each type of event. Um, what I like about that is that the try has the same points worth as a kick to grass. So instead of thinking of outcome try, that's worth 10, worth everything else we do, actually. Yeah. Um, so looking at points, maybe how they. <coughs> You could challenge a team to go, right, I know we're like, struggling this game, but we've got to get that point total that so we set ourselves, or something like that. Um, Sarah Kelleher, I was at a conference, we were live streaming this for, for her, um, and she talks, she's the England under 18 head coach. Really good, really good person. She sets up like um, media groups within our, within our player group, because they're like, you know how to take the you know how to take video and actually challenges the players to create those motivational, framing for learning type movies that you actually can use. Um, so. Okay, um, uh, this, is a, this is a little video. Um, most of the sort of videos that you'll see in this are all created by players. We like to tell, they like to tell their own story as along the way. So this was, a, I think it was Tess actually there with the white hat, created this. Um, so here's the England under 18s. Uh, 
uh, if you come into our world with the under 18s, we tell a lot of stories. In fact, our whole journey is around storytelling. Um, and, and for you to reflect on the journey that you've been on to shape your story, how has it shaped your story and how do you want to shape the next chapter of your short story? Sometimes we don't pause to reflect on all that's shaped us in a way that actually can really propel us forward. So, um, so one other thing um, with the England hockey, we have principles called the end in mind. Um, but we, as I say, we do a lot of storytelling. So one of the girls got us ready for the tournament with this little bit of creative storytelling. So that's us playing, but she's got some other games kind of sound-bited over it. Um, we've got a team talk in one hour. Could you please present the team talk to us, but could you present it in rap? So this is their team talk. And they, go, they were given this cover of this magazine as their brief. <laughs> Um, okay, we're on the last little run, self-expression. So I'm going to just hear from Crackles, because she's a super player. She's down in Australia at the moment, but I thought we'll, we'll get Crackles to have a little finish off her afternoon. Um, I'm Marion and is expression and free to express yourself. So I feel that the our environment is so welcoming and comfortable between peers and our relationship with each other and the coaches. Um, and one of those character strengths is grit and so uh, one of the things the girls came up with as an idea to help each other to do all of the training they came up with a swelfy so once you've done training you sent each other a swelfy of your training every time you trained and again players come up with amazing ideas around keeping each other motivated and um, this is a grit camp I won't play all of this now but we had Alex talk about what grit meant we had Danny Kerry talk about grit and the girls collapsing on the ground over there are the uh, Having it's really hard work at the Great Camp. I, I'll just go through this quickly. Here we go. It's just giving your players a chance to be creative and actually create some of the content, the motivational content. You can do it if you're given opportunities. Um, last one, because I'm just one minute over, um, is uh, coach development. So, this is Chelsea on the left hand side using the platform. Uh, they go pro their sessions. Um, they then get the the coach to self-reflect using the kind of filters that they set up for that coach, um, pulling out the kind of bits that they want to discuss. Um, the mentors can then come on and, and help that coach get better by feeding back on those moments that the coach has picked out or picking out their own moments. So actually we're asking players to self-reflect to help a lot. Consider maybe filming yourself um, as well. In terms of doing it, you can get vests that you can stick your, um, your phone in. Just turn your phone on, so therefore it's close to your voice and so pick that up and see what you're seeing as well. So don't think go through all the time. You can buy events. You've already got phone. And then the next bit is um, the Magic Academy stuff. They're, they're doing cool stuff. Um, I like what they're doing. They've got this whole coach community sharing clips, um, helping each other out. You know, Fletch Rusty with content there as well for them. Um, Kaz Morgan, who's an analyst for um, England, um, talking stuff. Guys from other side of the world, it's like this massive community that they've, they've created and um, that we host on the platform now and, and help them out with. So, um, again, video is, is becoming big within uh, coach development. Um, that's it. First one, I'm going to take a question. I'm happy to hang about. Um, <coughs> all right. Thanks very much, guys.